What is going on guys, Pat in the shop, and tonight we're talking cylinder heads for our 403 Olds build. Let's check it out. So I mentioned in the last video about the 403 Olds that I wanted to use uh, the new Edelbrock heads. Edelbrock just came out with a small block Olds head. They have a big block old head, Olds head for a while, but they came out with a small block Olds head. And uh, I wanted to use this cylinder head, um, but unfortunately when I priced it out for the customer and talked to him about it, uh, the heads were just way out of his price range for what he wanted to spend on the sure, motor. Originally not. he wanted to use the stock heads, um, but uh, after some talking and how much, you know, by the time we put some work into those cylinder heads, uh, get them flowing half decent with porting, it's just not worth the effort. But uh, that almost happened when I to told them the price that the Edelbrocks were gonna be. By the time we ship them up here and pay, pay exchange rate, uh, they're, they're, a hefty, they're a hefty amount of money <laughs> uh, to put into a set of heads. Um, so the, the other option was to try a set of these Speedmaster heads. Uh, I got these for a, a decent discount. Uh, and even if I have to put some work into them, even machine work uh, and do some stuff, we still will be less than half price of what we can do the Edelbrock heads for. So it was either that or we mess with the with the stock heads and I let, let him decide and he decided um, for the price difference, we, he wanted to do the aluminum heads. And uh, I think it's the best option. Being that it, it is technically, this is a big block old head, not a small block old head. There's a few things uh, that don't jive, even though in the last video, um, we got we had comments where they're direct bolt on. They are technically will bolt onto the block once we, we drill the holes out because the 403 uses a bigger uh, um, head bolt. Uh, there is a, a few things that, that, that don't work. Uh, one being the intake doesn't work 100%. You have to use a certain uh, option for intake because of the runner sizes. And the other thing being um, the end of the, the cylinder head here, see how on this head, how it has raised uh, um, embossments here for where, where they're drilled and tapped for the accessories. The, these, these aftermarket heads, they're flat. Uh, so when, when you bolt these onto a small block olds, uh, because of the deck height of the block, they sit lower and they'll actually interfere with the mechanical fuel pump. So where it would normally rest, the mechanical fuel pump would rest in into the uh, notches in the head. These these don't have those notches. So that's something we might have to address later uh, when the block comes back from the machine shop. We start putting things back together. So there's a few little things. Uh, as far as the intake goes, he decided uh, we'll get the, we'll use the intake that will work. Uh, I forget the part number right now. It's the Edelbrock intake. And uh, we'll just make the, the hood and everything. I'll just have to figure it out with the proper drop base uh, because this is going into a tr Trans Am with this, the shaker hood. So we'll make it all work. But as the, the after weighing out all the options, we decided to go with the Speedmaster heads. So this video is going to be of talking about what I think of the Speedmaster heads. This is my first time seeing these heads. Uh, and the flow numbers, we flow test them. Flow test them against the stock heads. Uh, and uh, overall, we're pretty happy. But let me show you a few things. So I ordered these heads direct from Speedmaster. You, uh, when you order them uh, assembled like this, there is a bit of a wait time because from what I understand, they assemble these in the United States. It's an offshore casting, obviously. Um, but you have to wait a little bit for uh, when you order these because they do assemble them. Let me talk about the things I like about this head. The The casting is really good. The, the decks are really thick. Uh, the casting is really smooth. Everything looks uh, it looks really good. The machine work on the deck surface is super flat. The, the valve job is actually really good. We got a multi-angle valve job, uh, and it actually uh, is actually half decent when, uh, so far from what I've checked. The valve stem clearance seems pretty good. The, the exhaust side is a, a little on the loose side, but it's not too, too bad. Definitely acceptable. Um, but, uh, overall, uh, you know, fairly happy with, with the actual casting in the, the machine work so far. Uh, they have a bit of a radius on the inlet, uh, on the outlet of the exhaust and the inlet of the intake. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're overall seem like a pretty, pretty decent casting. Let's talk about some of the stuff I don't like. Uh, first off, I was kind of, uh, 
weirded out by the fact that they advertised uh, 77 cc chambers i got 85 uh, 80.5 cc chambers and 80 cc chambers uh so that's that's pretty far off from the 77 they advertised um they're supposed to be two uh two oh seven two valves i got 2069 on the intake uh, but the exhaust valves were okay I do have an exhaust or an intake valve here, sorry, that I marked. Uh, one thing I found on one of the intake valves is it has a couple nicks in the stem. So I'm going to talk to Speedmaster about that. Uh, so, but the, so far the exhaust valves look pretty decent. I, I mic'd the stems. Uh, they seem okay. They're, they're obviously an offshore valve, um, but, uh, you know, decent for what they are. The intake valves are not back cut, uh, but that's something I'm probably going to do, especially I'm going to probably test on this uh scrap valve because i'm not going to run it with those nicks and i don't like that so i'll probably back cut it and play with that a little bit uh so overall uh pretty good retainers 10 degree locks retainers seem decent i don't know if you could screw that up too much um installed heights were they're supposed to be uh 1.8 the installed heights were a little on the tighter side 1.76 to 1.775 so let me get into this, the, the other stuff I don't like. So I talked about the, the chambers, the valve springs. So these, like I said, came assemb assembled for a hydraulic roller cam. The valve springs are kind of weird. So they're supposed to be 140 at 1 1.8. Like I said, the installed heights are a little less than what they're supposed to be. So we're at 150 to 155. But the spring rate of this spring is only about 260, 265. So that'll put us, um, uh, the lift we're running around 300 uh and if you were running what they advertise of 610 max lift you'd be 310 315 so the, okay for a, a mild hydraulic cam but just keep that in mind that these springs are kind of the spring rate isn't really that great for a for anything aggressive as far as a hydraulic cam i don't know what you how much aggressive uh, you're going to run on this and uh, I'm, I'm still out Still haven't decided if I'm just going to change these springs out and use their hardware. So we'll we'll get back to that. We'll maybe decide on that. But I, so far, the, all the springs I checked, they're fairly consistent. Um, it, again, it's just the, the spring rates kind of throwing me off for hydraulic cam. I think it's a little on the light side there. But for what we're going to be running in here as a fairly mild hydraulic cam, it'll probably be okay. Uh, the throat size on the intake, uh, right on 90%. So I'm not, I don't even think I'm going to play with the porting on these. I flow tested them and I'll, I'll give you the flow numbers in a second. But, um, the, the port, the, the throat side is right, right in, right at 90%, 1.862. I think I'm just going to leave that. Uh, a little bit of work uh, can be cleaned up in the exhaust. I'll move the camera so you guys can see that. All right, taking a look at her from the top, again, real nice casting. Everything looks great. Uh, the rocker studs, they're helicoiled. The exhausts are helicoiled. The intake is tapped. Um, one thing I didn't like is there's no spring locators, ID spring locators, which is something I prefer on something like this. Uh, we're, the jury's still out on the valve springs, so we might go ahead and change the valve springs, add ID locators. Not saying you couldn't add ID locators to this as well uh, because there's about 100,000 uh, worth of shims underneath the valve spring. So we do have room if we wanted to uh, add locators. So that's not the end of the world. Uh, there's flow numbers all over the internet, all different types of flow numbers for these, like from way too much that I, I was like, there's no way they flow that much uh, to some people that say they don't flow that great. So these are the flow numbers I got. 4030 bore, uh, clay radius on the intake, uh, 28 at 28. Uh, and then the exhaust is uh, no pipe on the exhaust. That's just open exhaust. And uh, they, they flow decent. Let me show you. So that's the flow numbers for the Speedmaster. And then let me show you the flow numbers for the stock head. So as you can see, when you compare the flow numbers for the Speedmaster, quite a bit better than the, the stock head. Though It was a good choice going to the Speedmaster heads. Um, they are going to be a little bit of work, but we're, we're going to have to put a lot of work into the stock heads. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, and for the price point and everything, I think this was just a better move for them. Who knows? So overall, I'm, I'm fairly happy with the Speedmaster heads. I think it's a, a solid casting. Uh, but the moral of the story of all this is when you're, when you're 
buying new heads, especially assembled, take them apart or have someone that knows what they're doing take them apart and take a look at them because it's amazing what little things you'll find nowadays. And sometimes even on really these high-end brand name uh, heads, you can end up with some pretty bad valve jobs sometimes or things get missed. Uh, it's just kind of the way it is nowadays. So it's not a bad idea to have cylinder heads looked at. Um, uh, let me know. Some of you, I'm sure some of you guys are going to be pretty upset we didn't go with the Edelbrox, uh, but that's just the way it goes sometimes uh, when you're dealing with people and their budgets. Uh, you know, the, just the price point and some of this stuff is getting a little crazy, and I think it's going to get worse actually coming up. But uh, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Comment below, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys.